So this is about submarine wake detection. Um, and there's a certain amount of science in there, but you can more or less ignore the science because what matters is the narrative. Uh, what matters here is about how scientific discoveries coming out of nowhere can change the situation. Uh, I slightly provocatively called it weird science. What I really mean is science that's known but hasn't been fully understood and the ramifications haven't been completely worked out. Uh, so submarines leave wakes. Uh, and while NATO has been pretty much entirely interested in acoustic submarine detection, uh, the Russians have put a certain amount of work into detecting wakes. They make some very wild claims which are not taken seriously in the West. What we do know is that submarines leave very complex wakes. Uh, that just maps some of them, that's not even all of them. The most obvious ones are, are those V-shaped wakes you get on the surface. And if a submarine is traveling at speed close to the surface, you get that and that can be seen from space, and it can even be picked up on radar. So submarine commanders know to watch out for that particular effect uh, and to stay deeper. However, there are ways of detecting wakes, even if they're very deep, and there's some rather creative thinking going into this. Uh, what we have here is a harbor seal who's wearing a blindfold and earmuffs. And the reason why he's doing that is because he's participating in a US Navy program to show how well he can follow the wake of a fish. Uh, these guys, they don't use sonar and they don't use visual. They can follow a fish by picking up its turbulent wake with their whiskers. And they can actually follow a fish from tens of meters away, track it and catch it. And the researchers on this have actually applied that technology and built an artificial whisker that can be fitted to a small unmanned underwater vehicle for submarine tracking. Uh, another effect that's been known about for a long time is bioluminescence. And anyone who's had the opportunity to go to a tropical beach at night may have seen the way the whole coastline lights up where the waves break. Uh, this is because there's marine microorganisms that emit light when they're disturbed. And you can get some very spectacular effects. These are actually dolphins swimming underwater. And as they go, they are disturbing the bioluminescent organisms, so you, they leave these glowing trails. Uh, this has been a problem for submarines ever since World War I. Uh, some submarines were picked up from the air because they were leaving bioluminescent wakes, and it's another thing to watch out for. However, we now have a greater understanding of this effect, and we know that there's some luminescence that isn't necessarily visible to the human eye, which may give a, a clue of where a submarine is. Now, this is where we're getting closer to the weird science. Uh, this looks like a washing machine in someone's utility room. It's actually the world's most advanced laboratory for studying sonomagnetic effects. Seawater is a conductor, and the Earth has a magnetic field. As anyone with basic physics knows, if you move a conductor inside a magnetic field, that will generate a current, and that current will disturb the magnetic field. So in theory, it would be possible to detect a moving object underwater by its sonomagnetic disturbances. That would be really handy because lots of anti-submarine warfare aircraft already have magnetic anomaly detectors on them. The problem comes when you do the maths and you find out that the sonomagnetic effect is about a thousand times weaker than the effect caused by the submarine's hull. So in practice, this doesn't look feasible. Uh, I've talked to oceanographers who use uh, sonomagnetism for looking at tsunamis and even something as big as a tsunami, they can only pick up when there's very little solar activity to disturb the magnetic field. So it didn't look like wakes could be detected by magnetic means. However, in 1996, a chap called James Peddle published three papers which were all about unusual magnetic phenomena associated with underwater objects. Uh, this never seemed to be followed up on. Uh, the, he's met, has some quite interesting ideas, and there's no references subsequent to this in the literature about what was done with it. Uh, so at first I thought, uh, well, maybe he just did this and then lost interest uh, and moved on to something else. However, a quick look at Dr. James Padell's LinkedIn page tells you immediately after publishing that he went on to become technical leader of detection systems at the Defense Research Agency, then went on to work with marine technology at Kinetic, US Navy, head of sensor systems at DSTL, head of maritime systems, and he's now the defense attache in Washington. Uh, so it's a reasonable assumption that his ideas have not been entirely ignored. 
what he was actually suggesting was related to this thing called the Debye effect, which was discovered in 1933. This is a bit complicated. Uh, C is a solution of sodium chloride salt, so it's got sodium ions and chloride ions in it. When anything nudges those, some ions move more than others, and the difference in movement between the different type of ions gives rise to a magnetic field. In theory, it's quite simple. In practice, from the equation at the bottom, uh, you will see it's impossible for a layperson to make any kind of sense of, never mind tell you what order of magnitude the effect is. Now, sometime after James Padell was in the US, by coincidence, perhaps, the US Navy launched a project to investigate the Dubai effect for submarine detection. Uh, and they describe it as an acousto-electrokinetic phenomena which has not been extensively investigated and they wanted to find out whether it could be used to detect submarines. So phase one, obviously enough, was to find out whether you really could detect a submarine with the Dubai effect. And if you could, phase two was to build a device to do it. They awarded contracts to three companies, including Cortana Corporation. Uh, and this, was, this is taken from their phase one proposal. Uh, and as they say, if the outcome is positive, it gives us a new anti-submarine warfare tool. And if the outcome is negative, at least it'll mean that's one vulnerability that might threaten US submarine security that we know doesn't exist. Nobody is talking about the results of any of those programs. But what we do know is that Cortana had a phase two program. From the previous, that would suggest that phase one was, was successful. Specifically, they also say in phase two, they're looking at the published foreign work on electroacoustic effects in the atmosphere. And at the end, they mention insights from foreign work to model the infrasonic signals transmitted into the air from a submerged submarine. Uh, and those are signals that you would get produced by Dubai effect, which suggests that they had access to some foreign work in this area. Possibly the British work, possibly someone else's. Back in 1990, there was a paper in a Russian naval magazine called Naval Collection uh, by a couple of Russian submarine captains uh, that says as far as wake is concerned, it can create a, magnet a magnetic anomaly, which we knew, we just thought it was very small. But they say as a consequence of the great extent of this wake, it is easier to detect this anomaly than the magnetic anomaly due to the metallic hull of the submarine. So it's entirely possible that the submarines have been used, the Russians have been using this effect for 20 years or more to detect submarines without us being aware that they had the capacity to do that. Now, if we want to stop anyone from detecting wakes, we would need to do some wake reduction. That's exceedingly complicated. I have no doubt that the successor submarines will be vastly more stealthy in terms of wake than anything in the water today. Uh, but that doesn't solve the real problem. The real problem is things like this. Uh, it's not a very good picture, but that's aqua quad. It's a small quad rotor drone with solar power cells on it. Uh, and it's amphibious. It can fly around and float on the water. And the, the current version has an acoustic sensor, so it can lower it into the water, listen for submarines, recharge itself from the sun, and then fly off somewhere else. And the idea is these will be operated in very large numbers. But unlike the aircraft with magnetic anomaly detectors, this can very easily be fitted with something else. It might have a hyperspectral sensor. It might have a thermal sensor, because you can also detect weights from thermal effects. Uh, it might have the sort of lateral line sensor. It might have uh, anything. It might very well have something that we have no idea is even possible at the moment. Uh, and this is a, a US Navy project. Expect to see very large numbers of those deployed. Uh, hiding from something that you don't know how it's going to detect you is going to be difficult. And this is the problem with weird science. Uh, these are exoplanets. Uh, well, this is NASA's idea of what they might look like. Uh, in 1983, back when the first vanguard was laid down, we knew that there were planets around other stars, but nobody had ever seen one. We couldn't see them. And the first one was detected in 1988. Now there are several thousands of them catalogued. Our view of the world is expanding. We're able to detect things. Now we can see Higgs bosons, gravity waves. 
planets around other stars, things that we could never see before. It's quite possible that science will throw up new and effective ways of detecting submarines that submarine designers haven't thought of. Thank you.